the king! Welcome back to another episode of the Toy of Two Heart of Darkness, the Canadian Let's Play! Oh, Canada! So, we're back in this Let's Play of Austin Lips where, um, off screen I kind of realized a couple things. First off, uh, we can go to politics and, uh, release a nation and, uh, take less infamy, infamy for it. And, you know what? Normally, under normal circumstances, I would say, no, this is a bad idea, but we're going to do it. No, we're not going to play as Fiji. So, we're going to release the nation of Fiji, and because we want to conquer more of China. Because China right now is so weak. And it's so divided amongst all these warlords. It's it's so great. It's, it's like the greatest moment of my life. So, we're going to go after China in a second, but first we have to say goodbye to Fiji and its great water. You will be missed. So, anyways, now that we have Fiji released, it's now time to start. Which country, what nation am I going to go after next is Canada? Well, I was thinking about going after Quinai, but they're in the U they're in the USA sphere, so it's gonna take it's gonna take a while before we could ever get to do that. So, and I was also thinking maybe Gunzai, but um, I could only get one region from them, and really that's not worth it. We need to take over entire chunks. So, the at natural thinking of mine is that I should conquer these guys the onions so that's it's not the onions it's like you and not you and not and I'm going to just buy a war to claim them it's going to be awesome so I'm going to get them and as you guys can see I'm a little bit calmer than I was last time I said you know I was a little bit too hyped up last time so I'm going to calm down now and what I realized about this now is that we can finally get in line to the um United Kingdom, so we're gonna instantly do that. And now we have analyzed the United Kingdom, and basically what's gonna happen is the United Kingdom is basically gonna fight this war for us. They're gonna use their entire army to go fight this war, and we're just gonna sit back as Canada and relax and not even do anything. That's what I'm planning. And what else do we need to do? Oh yeah. Um we also need to start building up a new army over in our Canadian provinces because we definitely, if a rebellion was to break out, we definitely don't want it to be free. So I'm going to use two... Wait, those are in North America. I don't want North America. I just want to use Asian provinces. Okay, right there. Right there. And let's get one architect. Okay, this will be our, our new army over there in Asia. And I'll make a little bit of an army over here in in North America. No, North America. Put two provinces. Okay, there we go. I'll have a couple soldiers in North America just in case if, you know... We have, just to help our, our army over here that's already right over here. Where is it? Oh, there it is, right over there. This arm right here, just to help this army over here conquer more stuff. And excellent. So, oh my goodness. This is, like, this past couple episodes have been probably some of the greatest of my entire, like, YouTubing career. Well, not YouTubing career, Victorian career, because I've never been able to conquer this much of China. And... The news of the world, here are lots of newspapers that are some really outdated because I didn't really pay attention to a lot of it, so I'm just gonna zone down them that way they don't keep accumulating, but yeah, the revolution in the Chinese Empire. Oh, that's what happened. They had a revolution. Ah, that's why they lost everything. I thought it was just because of the Russians beating them up, but that makes sense. So, right now, we're just going to be kind of waiting it out and going to be uh, taking out more of this um, army, and what I kind of realized off screen is we really are falling behind in terms of our industrial score, and it's halfway because, um, our capitalists aren't doing anything, but in actuality, I think they're doing a lot for our country, I mean, they are trying their best to invest, like, let's just take a moment to look at the investing scores, the beliefs must be expected, like, they invest... I think at a good rate. I'm not sure if that's a good rate or not, but we've encouraged a lot. The Dunning Menace, they're coming for us, everyone. They're coming for us, and, well, we're doing pretty good. So, anyways, we have Japan over here who has finally become a great power, which is awesome. Um, it's, it's always good to see when, like, a little, when, like, an old province becomes, like, a great power. So, you know, we have that now, and, you know, over here we have Australia. Australia unlike my uh, French campaign hasn't really proven itself and Mexico semi-Mexico everyone semi-Mexico and yeah we're just um, I'm just we're just kind of gearing up for our next conquest of Yuan which 
won't really be a conquest, it'll be more of the UK just going in and destroying them. I mean, oh my goodness, I, I'm, I'm going to be watching this from far and thinking, wow, I am a me. Yeah, because look how many regions are. Oh, dang, I got 4.0 infamy, that stinks. So, um, I was hoping not to get any infamy from this war, but you know, sometimes things happen and... You know, if it really does become a problem, I can honestly just release Hawaii and gain less infamy. Which, you know, I might honestly do because Hawaii, important as it is, it's really not that important. <laughs> like, I thought I would need Hawaii much more, but, I mean, we just completely bypassed Hawaii in our conquest for Korea and just took over Korea. So, you know, I, I don't see much, like much use for Hawaii at this point and there's an eternal crisis I'm not going to be backing either side because I'm looking directly at Unun or Yuanion which is looking so beautiful right now it's long live Canada and whatever region that is that's great Canada always has to keep expanding its cores which is good and okay so let us hope that the UK will join this war because I really don't have any backup contingency plan if they do not join this war. So establish protectorate. Will you guys join this war? You better. So you on Eon. Okay, they did join the war. Great. So now everyone, now we just watch as the UK does all the heavy lifting for us. Because I doubt they would want their territory being conquered by. Okay, and we have some Colombian nationalists, of course. A uh, very pathetic party, may I add. Trying to conquer, trying to conquer my territory. Um, I'm gonna use the army over here to go crush him. Um, yeah, we really don't need to be moving this army. F no, you guys can just sit right there for a second. You guys honestly don't need to move. I got it. Seriously, I got covered. And oh my goodness, the transcontinental railroad so much paid off in the end. Like that was such a good investment. And oh my goodness. Let's see, so is the UK, how the UK doing? Yep, they're starting to move their army in, which is good. Yep, yep, they're doing their conquest spree. And I now have activation of dies, which is awesome. And we have another national focus, which means, um, well, we don't have another national focus. We have more diplomatic, we have a revolution, the count revolution, which means, I think, it's some kind of special, like, thing, but it helps with terrorist cells, so... Um, that's good. And what do we need next? We haven't really been upgrading our navy in the past couple of weeks. It's only because we've been mostly trying to focus on taking over, taking over that tiny country over there called China, which is still what we want to focus on. Because I mean, how many, how much opportunity do you have to like just take over this much of China? I mean, it only comes in once in every gameplay. Just China, just not industrializing. You can just beat them to the pulp. And with the conquest of Yuan, we will gain another 19.63 million, which means our taxes will go up like crazy. Um, it does mean our population is going to be really imbalanced, and the balance of power. Great wars! What? Growing national pot? Ah, oh, great. <laughs> So everyone, great wars, growing national pride in countries around the world have reached a point where people will now not accept anything less than total victory when great powers clash. From now on, any conflict with at least two great powers on each side will be regarded as a great war. So God, help us all. So now everyone, we have great wars, so now events like... Big gigantic events are now kind of scary, which means we have to really watch out for that, because... Um, in a crisis, we definitely don't want to get into Great War, because we're not really about Great Wars. We're more about free freedom and immigration and healthcare. This, this, this is not really our war. And, wow, we're getting a lot of people immigrating to our country. Eh, just about as much as the United States, but that's still a lot. And can we do any more reforms? Yes, we can. Um, let's get our traditional... Wait, do, is, any, is there anything else people want? Um, 1.2, let's see, let's see, what's the most everyone wants? Free trade, people. I mean, actual free trade, genderism, populism, um, secularized, non ballots. I'm not going to do non ballots. I'm definitely not going to do that. Non voting. That one's. Huh. Okay, so the one that really is good is that we should do low minimum wage, which I will do because we're Canada. And we love helping people out. And minimum wage sounds like a great idea, and. They, yeah, they didn't really move into any of our territory, so we don't have to worry about them trying to take over us. 
and we have all these new soldiers being made and put them over here in our Manchu province, Provence, okay? So all you guys go right here, all you guys go right here, and move. Okay, any of them over here? No, these are all just regular soldiers. Okay, and we got... Shoot. Okay, this is actually not an actual soldier. Wait, these are Manchu men. Wow, we have lots of, like, Gunzai. No, not Gunzai. We have lots of Chinese Gunzaiian guys just right in the lower part of our empire. Um, it's kind of worrying a little bit, but as we can see, China... I mean, not China. Um, the British are taking care of almost all of the... Uh, uh, rebellion in this little part of China. We're just, uh, we're just slaughtering China. We are not giving them a break. We are just being bullies, and I, I, I can admit it. I can flat out admit it. We are being bullies to the Chinese people. But you know, this is what this is what the Canadians have been preparing for. This is what we have been investing in. We did not invest in anything in Africa because we knew nothing would be profitable. But us investing in China, that was what we wanted to do, and this is where our dream is coming true. It's just complete another annihilation, and we're going to soon own <laughs> this province, because we're not even doing anything. We're just letting the UK do almost all the heavy lifting, which is great. And, yep. <laughs> oh, and we have a new population surge, and more and more of our country is not even being shown. I don't... Cana Anglo-Canadian, which is... makes up 4.6 of our population, and... They're the only way. Let me make sure before I say this. Yes, they're the only population that can actually vote in our country. Wait, let me make sure about this. Let me see. So, can all cultures vote, or is it all cultures? Oh, all cultures can vote. Never mind. So, every culture can vote, but we have just. Oh my goodness. We have just, like. We are taking care of China. Like, it's no tomorrow. We are. We can now raise an army of 100 men. That is insane. Now we are just cooking in terms of stuff. And I'm going to allow military access, give military access to um, the UK just in case if I want to go to war with Gunzai. Gunzai would be a little bit of a hard conquest because it's, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit more popular. But oh my goodness, now. Oh, we have so much. We have so much now. China, China has just proven to be the best battleground we could have ever wished for. It has everything we wanted, and, um, the UK gives us further, okay, we hope they all perish, should we allow military access to our nation, we hope that we all perish in a point, what, king of further goals, we have decided that the troops in the U, <laughs> oh, I see, oh, I see, we're basically saying that we want them to die before we do, that's a good idea, I like that idea too, okay, so let's see, we have to combine this last soldier right over there, and we have our soldiers, oh my goodness, we are, we have a good, gigantic piece of army right here, and, hmm, what can we do? So let's see, we still have a truce with China, with actual, actual China, so we don't, we can't do anything there. Um, hmm, the Kui, we're gonna have to start ripping the Kui out of the, uh, American border if we want to get them. If we want to get Gunzai, how many regions would it take us? Well, it would probably take us a lot. I mean, these guys are how many regions strong? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six regions strong. Um, how many do you need at least? You need at least be uh, one, two, three, four regions strong. So we need to take two regions from them in the first war, and then we could downright annex them. So, hmm. Would they be worth it right now? That's the question. I guess that's really the question. Do we want to conquer them now, or do we want to wait until later? Personally, I wish I could conquer Kui, because they're kind of like right in the middle of my empire of Northern Asia and Southern Asia, but right now that's kind of impossible because of the, uh, um, great and abominable. Okay, so now we're getting really low economics. But it really does not matter because we have such a high... I mean, we can lower our taxes to, like, near impossible levels. Something that we could never do before. Actually, let's go to 40. Because I still want that 1,000% bonus. And poor people taxing is fun. 
Okay, so now we got this. Oh my goodness, this is this is like so crazy. We are we are like 31 million. I mean, we went from being one of the least most liked nations now being one of the most biggest nations. So how's our population decrease? No, we still can't influence China. They, I mean, not China. Um, the Russians. They still don't like us. So, um, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode and hope you guys have liked this kind of new switch and how the dynamics are going with us and our kind of just all-out attack on China. Um, basically, I think our next targets are going to be either Tibet, which I'm kind of going to be kind of shaken about because I don't know if the UK will actually either join our side or join their side. We'll have to see in the coming future. And we're also going to be thinking about going after the uh, um, Gunzai, split them up to like two regions, four regions, and then just annex them later. Um, that's what we're kind of thinking right now. And would they really be a good place to annex? Let me see. Um, hmm. You know, I honestly don't know. And that's... We'll have to think about that. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.